Welcome back everyone. Today we're taking a look at Grin's World, written by Steve Parker. Now Steve Parker began writing fiction in 2005. In 2006 he published a short story, The Falls of Marcros, in the Tales from the Dark Millennium Anthology. And Grin's World is his third novel which launched the Space Marines Battle Book series. Now if you couldn't tell from this incredibly awesome cover art, this book is based off of the Crimson Fist. Now, the Crimson Fist are a successor chapter to the Imperial Fist. And if you read through the Space Marine Codex or know a little bit about the Space Marine's history, you know that the events on Rin's World was a major turning point in the Crimson Fist's history. And the events that happened on Rin's World involves the Crimson Fist's home planet getting invaded by a giant orc wog. You see, an orc war boss, going by the nickname the Arch Arsonist, has decided to just completely wipe out the Crimson Fist. And it's up to the Crimson Fist to defend their homeworld against this Wog and protect their people from it. Now, what's probably going through your mind is that the Crimson Fist, their successor chapter of the Imperial Fist, is a chapter that specializes in defense, and particularly siege defense. So it'll make sense to believe that the Crimson Fist also have a very good static siege defense as well. And they're on their home turf. And you get the entire chapter fighting this Wog. So really, you probably just think it's going to be a cakewalk for these guys to take out the Orcs. Ah, but you see, although the Orcs are a bit dim, they're cunning. You see, they start using strategies that nobody's expecting them to use. And they're picking their targets very carefully. But that's not what really turns the tide in the Orcs' favor. Now I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this without ruining it for you. All right, I think I got it. Okay, if any of you ever played D&D, you would know what a critical miss is. That's when you roll the dice and get a one. Or a 20, depending on what the roll is, but whatever. But the Game Master is a little bit lenient, so he wants you to confirm the critical miss, and then you roll another one. All right, so now you're boned. But he wants to know the extent of how bad this critical miss is, and you roll another one. And you know what, he gives you a break, but then you roll two more ones. And now you're in an epically catastrophic critical fail and that's what happens I'm talking a critical fail that is such a major miss that it cripples the entire chapter and the orcs jump on this chance in fact it cripples a chapter so much to the point that the Crimson Fist are caught in a choice between saving the civilians at their own lives or sacrificing the civilians to ensure the survival of the Crimson Fist for future battles now, while that might sound a bit selfish, Steve Parker does a good job in presenting it in the book in a manner that makes it seem like a legitimate choice. You see, reinforcements are going to show up eventually and save the planet, or at least wipe everybody out so the orcs won't take it over. And there will be future battles that will need the Crimson Fist. And the Crimson Fist has a duty to the Emperor and the future of mankind. So, is it right for them to sacrifice the people on their home world? who, by the way, they do have an oath to protect in order to preserve their chapter, or do they fight down to the last space marine protecting those citizens, which will ensure the destruction of their chapter and might not ensure their safety once they're gone. And this is a big dilemma that their chapter master, Pedro Cantor, has to deal with. And with that being said, let's move on a little bit more to the story of what happens here. Now, as I already mentioned, there was an epic critical fail during the fight in between the Space Marines and the Orcs here. And Pedro Cantor, the chapter master, he separated from the surviving members of the Crimson Fist, who are practically on the other side of the continent. And he's trying to group up with them, along with a few of the Space Marines that he still has in his charge, to try to coordinate a type of defense. But along the way, he's meeting a few human survivors, or I guess you could call them refugees by this point. And he is caught in the dilemma that protecting these people is going to slow him down, and he won't be able to make it to the rest of the chapter. And there are some fairly big moral choices he has to make in this. And while I have been talking about the chapter master, and been making it sound like he's a really big part of this book, he gets overshadowed by one of his captains. Really, the story behind the chapter master seems like a side story to the bigger picture. The main character you're going to be following is Alessio Cortez, captain of the 4th Company. Now, Cortez is Cantor's best friend. Now, if you ever worked a job in which you were promoted to the supervisor and your fellow co-workers were your best buds, 
Jess decided to completely take advantage of that and start goofing off, disrespect your authority, simply because they knew you were their friend, they could get away with it, then you would know the kind of relationship Cantor has with Cortez. Cortez is the kind of space marine who just will not die, no matter how many wounds he has, and he has that reputation. And he has a kind of arrogance in which he just does not listen to the chapter master. He does things his own way, and he knows he'll get away with it because they're best buds. Even other captains in the chapter kind of slap their foreheads whenever Cortez shows up and starts messing things up. And along with that attitude, Cortez really does steal the show from everybody. In fact, it seems like this story is more about the lieutenants on each army side than the actual leaders. See, one of the main boss fights we get in the book deals with orc and mega armor fighting Cortez. And that's a pretty big epic battle going on between those guys. While when we finally get the showdown between Cantor and the Arch Arsonist, it really is dumbed down in comparison. You know, when I read the Space Marine Codex and read up on Pedro Cantor, I thought the guy was pretty awesome. Then I read this book, and really he just gets punked at every chance by his friend. It kind of started to bug me, but fortunately the scenes of Cortez were pretty awesome anyway, so I kind of let that slide. But what did bug me in this book is that, especially early on, a lot of scenes didn't really seem to have an ending. It was a situation in which you were assumed to know what has happened or it was explained later in a different scene. Such as being in the middle of a giant battle where all chaos has just broken loose. And then we cut to another scene that in the timeline takes place afterwards and they just mention that everybody got out of their alive. Oh no! We're surrounded! There's just too many of them! And then they escaped. Or with some characters that just kind of died but were told about their deaths because the scene cut out before it happened. You must remember, we are the backbone of the Imperium. In order for us to succeed, we must hold on to our courage. And then they died. And although some of these scenes are explained, it's still really aggravating to be in that scene and then have it cut away from you and then explain to you what happened afterwards. But on the flip side of that, we do get a lot of really good battle scenes going on in this book. And it's not just the Space Marines are going on with. This book also involves the PDF Force, the Planetary Defense Force, of the planet also helping out with the defense. So we're also seeing the human side of this. We also see a little bit of the governors and the other politicians that are trying to deal with this invasion and trying to keep the people safe. And we get to see these battles going on from different fronts between Cantor, who's trying to make it to the rest of the chapter, and the rest of the chapter, which is trying to hold off on New Rin City. And if you're at all interested in knowing more about the Crimson Fist, and the way their mentality works, and what their chapters is all about, this is a great book to pick up. I know I had a few gripes with it, but those get far overshadowed by what else happens in the book. So I think this is a great pickup and a great way to start off the Space Marine Battle series. And if you're completely new to the Warhammer franchise, this is a good way to start off. Now, that's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth.